Alright, I'm getting my kiln set up for another bisque firing. I've got a pretty big load today. Got uh, 20 tumblers in here. Four of them are greenware being bisqued for the first time. The other 16 have been underglazed. I wanted to re bisque them before uh, putting the final clear glaze on them. Uh, you can see I've got three fire bricks set up opposite corners to support my round shelf and on that I'm going to put two big uh, decanters and two big vases and I'll show you a picture of that when I get to it. Okay, well I've got my round shelf positioned on top of the uh, bricks uh, supporting it just above the tops of the tumblers and I'm getting ready to load the vases and decanters. Okay, I got the second shelf stacked. I've got three greenware pieces, two vases and one decanter. And I've got two previously bisqued pieces that I've uh, put under glaze on and wanted to re-bisque before final glazing. You can see I got just enough room to clear the top here. It's a pretty full load for this little kiln. And uh, as soon as I can get my burner hooked up, we'll get started. All right, we're cranking it on here. Turning on the gas. Maybe just a little bit here. I was all disorganized there. This set will start slow. I have preheated the greenware. It spent the night in the kitchen stove. It's completely bone dry. All the uh, physical water has been cooked out of it, but still will start slow. I'm going to try to hit about uh, 212 degrees an hour the first couple hours and then we'll kick it up a little bit. Ooh, upside down. Almost done here. It's almost four o'clock. It'll be a four hour firing. We are at 1752 Fahrenheit. Hit 1733 uh, half an hour ago, and I've tried, been trying to hold it at 1750. Looking for about a cone 08, 07, somewhere in there. Probably about a cone 07 and a half, I'm guessing. I'll have to go look at the chart to make sure. Right now, 1750 degrees. It's right at 4 o'clock, a four hour firing. I think it's time to shut this puppy off. Quick look in here. Nice and hot. Well, it's about 10 minutes after 5. I shut the kiln off about an uh, hour and 10 minutes ago. I've got to haul all this stuff back inside now, but you can see got one corner of the kiln that wanted to leave a little gap weighted down. And I put a fiber plug in there where the uh, burner port is. And let's go check this thing out. Everything's sealed up pretty tight. We got up to, I think the high that I hit was 1,755, 
We're at 1146 degrees now, letting it kind of cool off by itself. And at this point, uh, everything is looking good. Hopefully, about 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, I can unload this thing. We'll see. Well, Patches, my loyal kiln dog, came out to check on me. Pacho! Hey! Hey! She's 16 years old and doesn't hear very well, but she can't stand it when she's not right here with me. And so she came out to see what I was doing. Let's see here. Well, it's about an hour and 45 minutes after shut off. 980 degrees, so we are cooling off. I should mention a little bit about the kiln construction. Uh, it's a flat pack kiln. I'll uh, publish the website where you can see how it's made, but uh, basically it's just hog wire, two, two foot by two foot squares of hog wire, and I've got these little uh, wire staples that are holding the two inch fiber to the hog wire, and it's just assembled. It's uh, six pieces, and it's just assembled using these little 49 cent wire clips that I got from uh, Walmart. Uh, the most expensive part of the kiln was the uh, fiber. I think that ran me about 110 bucks. The second most expensive thing was this little digital pyrometer. Bought it off eBay. I think I got the pyrometer and the uh, K-type thermocouple for yeah, it was like 50 bucks, something like that. So it's a fairly inexpensive thing. Actually I think the uh, the weed burner that I got at Home Depot it's a 500,000 BTU weed burner that ran me about 50 bucks and I bought this attachment so that I could it's a high pressure uh, regulator that runs to two hoses so that I can run two tanks and avoid any issues with uh, freeze up to do a typical four hour bisque uses less than two-thirds of one tank of gas so I can easily get three bisque firings off of uh, off of these two tanks and it's just a pleasure I don't know I got my fishing rod out here also because earlier today I saw about a six pound bass cruising around these lily pads right here it's a pleasure this time of the year uh, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to set my kiln up because the rainy season is going to start in another couple of months June 1st is the beginning of hurricane season and typically we get rain every afternoon nice heavy thunderstorms that are gonna make uh, even if I can get the firing done it's gonna make cooling the kiln problematic but while we got this great April weather the snowbirds are about ready to head back north which will be a good thing traffic down here will get back to normal and uh, hey life is good in southwest Florida Well, it's five hours and ten minutes after I shut this thing off. It's still 500 degrees. It's too uh, <clears throat> too hot to open the kiln yet. So, I'm going to leave it sitting here, and I'll come back and check it in a little bit. Well, it dropped down under 300 degrees finally. It's after 11 o'clock at night. So I decided to go ahead and open the lid. I had cracked it previously. Everything is looking pretty good in here. Still a little hot to handle. I figure another 20 minutes or so it'll cool down enough I can pick it up. But I don't see any obvious damage at this point. So uh, things are looking good. Well, it's 11.35. We've cooled down to 106 degrees with the lid open here. Oh, my. my black cat panther came out to help me now. Patches is inside sleeping. But it's, uh, it's time to unload this thing, so let's start stacking things up in this box to take inside. Get the bisque pieces out here, the greenware pieces first. Let's see 
how many of these I can fit on. You can tell I got a lot of uh, Uni University of Georgia fans in the family. These decanters are gifts for them. 18 of the 20 tumblers are UGA tumblers as well. Oh, it's not going to fit. I'll set that up here for the time being. And uh, I'm going to need two hands to get this shelf out. So I'm going to shut it off and start it up again in a minute. Well, I've got the uh, top kiln shelf off here. And as you can see, I've got my 20 tumblers here, so we'll start unloading these. It's still pretty hot. It came out good. I get the ones that are freshly bisked first. Cart those inside. And come back, it's probably going to take me two more trips to get all this stuff. Looks like they came out pretty nice. And I'll go ahead and get these bricks out of here while I'm doing this. I'm getting to be pretty good at this one-handed photography stuff. I think I can fit one more on here. Make room for it. One of my UGA tumblers. And let me cart these inside. I'll be right back to finish up. Well, I figure I got two more trips to go here with this unloading. And I got this piece of pine board that I'm using as a shelf just to help carry this stuff into the house. And it turned out pretty nice. Whoop. That's it. Break it all after you've got all this work done firing it, huh? Jesus, I'm like a bull in a china shop, no pun intended. I reckon I can get 10 on this carry. I started re-bisking after uh, doing the underglaze because when I didn't, I found the glaze ran a little bit when I coated it with clear glaze. All right, let me carry this in. I'll come back, make the final trip, and that'll be it. All right, doing the last unload here. They've cooled off enough now I can handle them barehanded. a little bit hot. I'm just going to leave the kiln shelf here to cool off overnight before I have to mess with cleaning that stuff up tomorrow. Altogether though I'm pretty pleased with the way things turned out. When I get all this stuff inside I'll take a quick clip of uh, what it all looks like in the in the light of the house. Well, I got everything moved inside. You can see my 18 University of Georgia tumblers that I made. Two UGA decanters. I've got four uh, unglazed tumblers that uh, I'll be doing something with. This is a nice piece, a uh, nice little uh, vase. And a similar one, but with a neck on it. The only issue I had was this particular piece right here. And quite frankly, it had a crack in the bottom that I tried to repair. I almost 
decided to recycle the clay, and I said, now nah, I'll go ahead and experiment. So I, I repaired the crack in the bottom before bisque firing, but unfortunately, my repair job didn't hold, and the crack split right up the side. But, hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It was, it was a test to see if it could be done. It'll make a good target practice uh, target now. It'll break nicely when hit with a bullet. Anyhow, actually I'm pretty well pleased with the way the whole thing turned out, and it was a productive day indeed.